Hello everyone and welcome back SNBL community and for those of you new to the channel you're really going to want to watch this one all the way through. I believe this is a way for some of you that have been listening to this channel and you put that stop loss in or you've been waiting to cost average down. This is the opportunity in this next week to pull the trigger to cost average down because next week I believe we're going to get the notify. Well, actually, I think we're going to get the notification for the earnings any day now. And August 11th potentially is going to be the earnings date for SNDL, possibly. I mean, we won't know until they officially announce it. I'll tell you where I got that date from. And we're on day five of compliance. So five more days, we're halfway there. That could be another catalyst for SNDL. I don't think it's going to stay this low for too much longer tomorrow could be the buying actually today could be the buying buying opportunity we're going to go through those levels in this video let's go ahead and get started now i want to take a look at the price of oil and i want to explain why it went down it's sitting at 93 dollars oil sinks about four percent after weak factory data sparks demand concerns now why are we talking about macro economic factors. I just want to remind you, some people think that this is a way of wasting time in a video, but I want to break it down for you and understand that we are in a blackout period with SNDL and these macroeconomic factors matter. If you're looking to cost average down, you're waiting for one of these really dark things to happen. So that way it's a buying opportunity because we're looking for opportunities to buy low. We want to watch these copper futures and see how they feel about economic growth because copper is used not only in housing market, but it's used in the auto manufacturing industry, especially as we start to transition to EV technology. Now, the S&P U.S. manufacturing PMI final, you can see it was only off by a point. But these are the manufacturing indexes that people were looking at. And you can see it's not off by much. This was previous. And this is the median forecast. Now, tomorrow, or I should say today, August 2nd, job openings, quits, rental vacancies. Take a look at what they're going to be reporting and motor vehicle sales. I know there's been some reports that maybe this is going to slow and then estimates for some of those stocks could possibly follow. Uh, global squeeze on the energy supply, crippling shortages to send not only power but fuel prices surging may get worse. So are we really going to put a cap on inflation when it comes to energy prices? We do have a global energy crisis, especially with Germany. And I'm hearing reports in Australia. Let me know out there globally. If you live somewhere else and you have an energy crisis, let us know in the comments below. Pelosi's going over to Taiwan, and this is a big deal because it could have an impact on some of those China stocks. I'm talking about the Alibabas and the Neos that are really popular. Mm -hmm. Not only this, people like maybe even me yesterday bought a little bit of Alibaba options thinking that that was a good point at $88 to buy for a quick little bump. We'll have to see what happens with Pelosi going over there. I mean, I think people are on the fence of how they feel about Pelosi, but going over there and not listening to China threats I think that was the good call, and people are saying she's got some G status for doing that. Now, I want to do a comparison between Alcana and Sweetwater, and I want to take a look at Glassdoor. I'm filtering this by most recent, and this is a message to the management team for Alcana. What I'm looking for is a well-run business and that Zach didn't go out and buy a failing liquor brand. You got the numbers, but are you treating the people well? And is somebody from HR responding to these comments? I would tell you to go through here and just take a look at what's being said. I mean, I don't know that it's great for Alcana. Now, when you go through, and I've done something similar to this in the past, but I didn't compare it to Sweetwater. Sweetwater's got some good reviews. You see this 3.8% compared to, if we scroll back up here, 24 not only is Sweetwater got better reviews, but they're making more revenue. They're in the U.S. market. And I believe that's a benefit to Tilray that you're not going to get just being consolidated in the Canadian market. So not only that, but down here, you've got HR actually responding to some of these, these comments. Not only do they have higher reviews, but HR is taking it serious when somebody says something down here in the comments. So I thought that that was something that, Zach, I hope you take away from this, 
is I believe you need to get in here and make sure your HR people within your company are responding to these managers are taking it serious and you're putting them under your wing to give them some development. Now I wanted to take a look at liquidity because are we losing that volume previously? And also some of you mentioned, are they fixing the numbers in here? Is the market cap fixed? So finally it looks like Sundial did get the market cap fixed because this was not correct before. And we knew it would take just a couple of days for that to happen. And you can see right now we're sitting at $2.28, and this is expected to at least double once the earnings come out. And where is Tilray? Up here in the number two spot, where I believe once this blackout period's lifted, Sundial will secure that spot once again. But how long will they keep it? Because this is an entirely new price. And I've got some thoughts on that. So for those of you that are new to the channel and you've never watched an SNDL video before, we've got Alcana and we've got Nova Cannabis. These are two huge portions of the business that were recently added. It's an equity stake in Nova Cannabis. And the reason that we're going to focus on Alcana is because every dollar that is spent, 35 cents is taken an excise tax up in Canada. Regulation is absolutely stupid and it's just not a profitable business when the end of the day comes. You can see there's three bullet points here for strengths on Nova Cannabis and there's one, two, three, four, five bullet points here from the most impactful bullet point first and the least impactful bullet point last. You can see they were struggling over here. I, I think that the leadership team may intentionally done that. I mean, I just imagine somebody's walking up to Zach and they're like, hey, Zach, here, got the slides ready. What do you think? Yep, that's about all we got for Nova. Sorry, that's that's as good as it is. Now, Nova's not doing terrible, but this is the big winner. Alcona brand is a massive revenue producer and the excise tax is not as bad. They're still getting taxed for liquor, but it's not as bad. You can see 2020, it was 680. This is a Canadian Canadian dollars, so don't get too excited, and 726, but it's still close. It's close. That was the revenue in sales. Now, we've already gotten a quarter heads up of what Q1 looked like, so we're going to be covering that. But before we do that, PepsiCo takes 550 million stake in energy drink maker Celsius. Why do I bring this up? Because the focus of this video is to talk about Alcana and how massively incredible it's going to be because we are finally recognizing a full quarter potential of that liquor brand. So energy drinks are one of the fastest growing non-alcoholic beverage categories. And I just think that this is something health and wellness, energy drinks, this is something that Alcana needs to be thinking about or Zach needs to be thinking about. Now let's cover the company's average price target. We've already talked about this in previous videos, but I do want to pull up a recent and I don't know about Investors Observer. I, I don't know how great these guys are, but they are getting an average price target. We know on the low end, it's $4.80. On the high end, it's $8. Median, six sixty. dollars If we just get to the middle, and you can believe people are going to be piling into this at the last minute. They're going to be waiting in line to get their ticket. This will get pushed up, I do believe, $6.60. I found this other article that was talking about the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act. Big institutional investors are holding SNDL in their portfolio during Q1. 152 funds disclosed owning SNDL shares and companies like ETF Manager Group, DE Shaw Company, and SAF Jackson. The company will declare the second quarter results on August 11, 2022. I don't know where they got that from. But if there's any truth to that, that's next week. And if the announcement comes today or tomorrow this week, that could cause this price to go higher. I want you to be able to get it on the drop or this week. If you're going to start a position and you can see the low end here, we've got anywhere from 212, 218, 220, 215. If you're buying in this low range right here, you are in low. So I would not hesitate to buy at any of these prices if you're in under $2.20, you have bought low, you have done well. Now, another thing you'll recognize here is the volume is starting to trend down. We expected this to happen. This is something that I was expecting to happen during the reverse stock split. We see that 20 
million volume, but now it's starting to trend down. No big surprise, this is going to trend back up once we get that earnings notification. Now, Akana's revenues, 162.5 million. Remember, this is in Canadian dollars. But I want to take that number, 162, because they were saying that if they had recognized it, they were trying to give us guidance. I believe Zach did everything he could within his power. Well, he may have done everything he could. He did give us guidance. I'm really shocked that this last quarter didn't respond better. But the average estimate right here is 162. That's what we got here. Potential upside, 1,925.80% from a year ago sales. This is what the comparison will be. And the margins should also be good. That's what we're going to see. Last thing I got for you is we had a downgrade in Tilray Brands. And I believe this was because one of the analysts was on the call. They asked the question. And I think Tilray is a very transparent business. They talked about their pricing over in the UK or Europe going from $8.50 on the medical side because they have this amazing campaign on where they're able to explain the benefits of having it for $8.50 and there's the potential that they may have to cut their prices to be competitive and remember this next year this is about to get tough to $3.50 so I would say that this sector still has some bleeding to go unless we get legislation progress happening but remember, Tilray is still something that I think you should take a look at and start to diversify because they are better positioned to respond on legalization much faster. And if that happens, I see Tilray being a little bit more volatile than Sundial. I could have that wrong. Let's take a look at the chart. You know, we might not need a chart on this, but I'm going to do it anyway because we've been completely flat. But I want to put these lines back in here because the ones that I had before it was staying right in that area that never hit the resistance and didn't fall down to a buy support line, but tomorrow could be different. So let's take a look and put one more in here, right here at the resistance line. I want it to be a little bit tighter because I want it to hit multiple points on here. And I want to come up just a little bit for those of you that definitely want to be patient and get in here. I've got 219, but that's what we said before, 220. So I'm going to make this bottom line green because I believe that this is a buy range, buy zone down here. And I know this is really tight. We're going to make this one red. You do not want to buy above 230. You just, I mean, I don't, I don't think I should have to say that, that anybody should buy above 230, but hopefully that helps somebody at some point, sometime. Those are your levels for this. I mean, this is definitely taking a drop. And most people out there that see an SNDL video, they just think, penny stock there's but just remember a lot of people don't understand that this alcana brand is going to be absolutely massive and there's not enough people talking about this catalyst coming up in less than two weeks that's all i got i hope you enjoyed this video if you did you know what to do i'll see you in the next one